Well, how y'all are this afternoon? This is your buddy George Jones over at the Bergen Gun Range with my next installment on eight. I got this old used gun. The old used gun I got today is this guy. You say, well, that's a sporterized 1903 Springfield. Yes, it is. This is a highly sporterized and correctly sporterized 1903 Springfield rifle. Uh, this one is a World War I production gun. Uh, it's been nicely sporterized. Correctly sporterized. It has a... a um, really? Whew. So I was being... So I was going to be carried off by pterodactyls. It was a flight of geese just come over about 75 feet off the ground. I've always got the wrong gun when they're around. Tisk, tisk, tisk. This guy has a really nice stock on it. They've stocked it well. It's a, I don't know what brand it is. It has fleur de lis on the uh, grip cap. I don't know what manufacturer that is. It, but uh, everything's white lined. Uh, it's got white line and spacer on the uh, on the butt end. It's got uh, Packmeyer recoil pad on it. It's got a sling swivel on the rear, which is very nicely made. But it doesn't have a sling swivel on the front. I think at one time it probably had a sling swivel band up here on it. Uh, it has. Uh, the barrel, I think this is the original barrel to the gun, I'm not sure. Um, it's been cut down on a lathe and straightened up. The sight wrap and so forth, and this is in 1903. The sight wrap has been removed, and this band has been put in place to support the rear sight assembly, which is a marbles. Uh, the front sight is a ramp type with a elongated front sight bead, and it appears to have some type of white liner in it. It might actually be ivory. Um, I suspect that this rifle was sporterized in the 1950s. Um, these plain stocks like this were common all the way up to the 1950s and then in the 60s some of the stock makers started making fancier stocks and that become the the uh, norm um, this is actually and I've said this before you shouldn't monkey with or or uh, sporterize uh, original military rifles because of their value this rifle is a, let's take a bolt out there so you can see it better. This rifle is one of those guns. Can you see the daylight through here? You see that cut in the receiver right there, which is partially covered by the, uh, partially covered by the uh, wood? That cut in the receiver is so that this receiver would accept the Pedersen's device, which was a device devised in World War I to make the 03 Springfield into a semi-automatic pistol caliber carbine. Yeah, that's right. Uh, this rifle is marked U.S. Springfield Armory Model 1903 Mark I. About 80,000 of these guys were made originally, and a great deal of them were destroyed at the end of the Pedersen device experimental stage. This rifle is a rare rifle. Uh, this rifle, in its original military configuration, as a Pedersen device modified rifle, in today's market is worth about $3,500. Uh, as it sits this rifle in the condition that it is in and the modifications that have been made to it is worth somewhere around $450. Now, having said all of that, 
let's try out the old uh, sporterized 30 off 6. Let's see, let's try some. Uh, you got to lock that bolt in there, Jones. There we go. Now let's lock her in there. Okay. Let's try some 30 odd 6 M2 ball, 147 grain. This particular ammunition is Privy Partisan. Let's try five here. See how it works out for us. in there, get her up on safe. See, it's on safe. It's got this little gizmo right there, and you point that up, just like on a Mauser. All right, now. Shooting it off the old block here. Uh, my steel silhouette at 125 yards has been shot down, and I haven't replaced the chains yet. So we're going to try the 14 inch steel disc that's about an inch and a half thick at 125 yards and see if I can actually hit anything with this thing. Let's get up here. Oh God, that was a hit. Uh, this guy has a buckhorn style rear side on it where you have a great big wide uh, V up at the top and then a, it V's down to a really narrow aperture. And how you do that is you simply move your bead up and down in that V and uh, that gives you gives you some uh, Kentucky elevation. Rifle works smoothly. Right, let's try this again. I give it top of the smallest notch. Whammo. This is a good shooting rifle. The problem is it's got a beautiful cheek piece on it on the wrong side to me. Try the old steel ground. No, let's try the swing here. Let's see if we can get the swing. Nope. I'm turkey tonight. I've never fired this gun before, so I don't have any real dope on it yet. Let's try some 150 grain federal soft points left over from deer season last year. Oh, get them in there. Put them in there, Jones. There we go. I think it holds. Yeah, one more. Maybe they shoot might shoot a little better. Might shoot a little better. Back to the target I hit before. Ooh. Just a swing and there's a chunk of concrete block laying down there. I'm gonna try and hit it. I'm gonna get two cameras eventually and learn how to edit it together so you can watch your favorite firearms presenter and bullet impacts at the same time. But I just, just ain't got there yet. Ooh, bam, yow. That was a hit. I don't know that this rifle's a tack driver or not. 
All right, put it on paper to find out what it'll actually do. Let's see how badly tear up a steel groundhog with it. Missed it. Missed it to one side slightly. Five inch diameter target at 125 yards is not a very big target with a 30 alt 6, to tell you the truth. But it ought to be able to do it. Oh, wham! That's a nice one. That's got a hole in it now, buddy. One more. We're going to try one more. About all my aging shoulder can take. Let's try one more here on the same target steel groundhog. See if I can hit it again. Hit it again. <laughs> all righty then. Yeah. I bought this gun myself. Uh, this isn't a this isn't a uh, supporter's rifle. I bought this gun. It was at a local uh, local establishment, and I've been looking at it for months. And the other day I decided, you know, I'm going to go down there and buy that Springfield, see what kind of gun it'll make. And if it makes me a good gun, I'll just keep it and not trade it for something else. Uh, so far, I like it. It's a very nicely, very good example of what a previous military rifle sporterized should look like when you're done with it. Uh, I suspect this gun was done in the 1950s. Uh, they didn't start release, the federal government didn't start releasing uh, 1903s and 03A3s to the sporting market until after the Korean War. Uh, they had so many M1s by that time that they needed, the M1s were starting to go into second line service. And 03A3s and 1903 Springfields were leaving second line service, which was National Guard, ROTC, Army Reserve, and things like that, you know, being collected up and sold off on CMP, Civilian Marksmanship Program, and, and privately as well. Uh, so these guns really started coming available in the mid-1950s. Uh, the wood on it, the way it's designed and so forth, the fact that it has a Lyman rear sight on it and uh, that sort of thing, because Lyman went out of business about 1959, or at least went out of the sight, or marbles went out of the sight business. They stayed in the knife business for a while, but they went out of the sight business. Uh, and so forth. Just a lot of things on it to tell me that um, this is a 1950s job. Uh, it's very nicely appointed, very beautiful gun. The value of this gun is somewhere around, I, I get $400 for it. Uh, you know, I, I, I'm going to keep it in my, you know, rifle collection. You know how I like those things. And, classic, classic bolt-action hunting rifles. But uh, if you see one of these guys around, just look at it. It's a matter of being able to grade out a used gun is what it comes down to. Uh, if you see a Patterson device modified 03A3 or modified 1903 Springfield that hasn't been further monkeyed with, and you can buy it cheap, you better buy it. Because if you find one of these guys in original condition, they're worth real serious money. Well, that's about the size of it for this installment of, hey, I got this old used gun. Uh, like, take, share, I commentate, and subscribe. Uh, I haven't figured out what the 1,500 subscriber giveaway is going to be yet, but it's going to be something. Uh, drop me an old dollar in the Patreon bucket on the way out the door if you'd like to support my content. If you don't like to want to support it that way, that's fine. Uh, I'm going to keep making content for you anyway. Well, I'll uh, see y'all when I see you, and happy hunting. We'll see y'all.